I'm collecting every single PAL Sega Mega Drive game. And this month's collector's edition, I've added one of the rarest, most expensive games that you can buy for it. My name's Mike, and this is the Retro Gamer Boy Show. I love collecting for the Sega Mega Drive and all of its peripherals as well, the Mega CD and the 32X. And this month has been an excellent month for me. I've added to the Mega CD collection, I've added a ton of games to the Mega Drive collection, and I've added some games that I've been after for the longest time, including one of the most expensive, rarest games that you can buy in the collection. And I got it in near mint condition. Let's check out this month's Collector's Edition. Desert Demolition. This is a really interesting game. It's graphically quite impressive actually and uh, very close to the source material. I love the animations in it, I love the character in it. It's uh, a really well presented game but I just didn't get on with the gameplay, the platforming gameplay in this game. Yeah, it was just a little loose for me. Uh, didn't really have a good direction to it. Uh, you know, a solid 7 out of 10 for gameplay, but a solid 8 or 9 for, for visual graphics. I finally found Predator 2 for a decent price. I wasn't expecting much from this game. To start off with, the game is in good condition. Really happy with the quality of this game uh, and the condition I got it. And the price. I think I paid 25 for this. Um, but what blew me away was the gameplay. It was so much fun. It was almost like a, a twin stick shooter. Kind of like a Smash TV type uh, gameplay. Really enjoyed it, really, really enjoyed it. Simple, simple gameplay mechanics, but a lot of fun to play. Hook, not a perfect copy, but I was really happy with the price that I got this for. Now this game has been selling for like 50 pounds plus for the longest time. Managed to get it for 40. Uh, and it's in okay condition. I think I'm going to have to change the manual at some point. It got a little bit wrecked. Um, the pages are separated and I had to do a bit of work bringing the pages back together again, putting new staples into the back, uh, compressing the, the paper on the manual to flatten it out again. So a lot of work went into fixing this, um, but I did get it a lot cheaper and the box and the cartridge are in gate condition. So manuals are kind of 7 out of 10 uh, and everything else is a kind of uh, 8 or 9 out of 10 there. Um, gameplay wise, uh, visually really nice, 7 out of 10 again for, for the, the platforming. It's, it's fun, solid platforming, nothing is going to blow you away, um, but visually quite impressive. Fantastic Dizzy and Cosmic Space Head, the dual pack. So this one is really a, a major, what I call a major variant. The ROM inside the cartridge is different because it has two games on here and the manual and the cover art is different. So a major variant, um, but you can you could live without it if you're going for a full Sega PAL collection. If you know you've got Dizzy and you've got Cosmic Spacehead, you could technically say you've got both these games. But if you're going for, I guess, a, a full, full uh, collection, then this is something you want to add into the collection. The only thing I'm disappointed with is we've got a bit of sun fading here. Not horrific, but it, you can tell the difference. Uh, but otherwise, this is a complete in box edition so not complete in terms of manual and cartridge but complete complete because inside here we've also got the poster that came with this game so here is the dizzy poster fantastic dizzy poster that came with this game now i'm not sure if there's also a space head poster as well uh, I think this is fully complete with just this poster, but if you know differently, if you know there was supposed to be a Cosmic Spacehead poster as well, let me know so I can add it to my copy. Hardball 3 finally makes it into the collection, and it's so hard to find these cardboard box games in this kind of condition. So Hardball 3 is technically the last 
of the cardboard box games that I need to get to get a full cardboard box collection. I say technically because there are two cardboard variants that came out for Power Territories, and that is Pele and Bubsy in Australia. Bubsy came in a cardboard box, uh, and I think also for the Genesis came in cardboard box, as well as uh, Pele. So I get those two, and I have a full, full cardboard box collection. Uh, really nice condition. I'm so happy with the last uh, maybe four or five boxes that I've got because they've been in great condition. It's got all the cards in here. And then the manual is, oh, my manual is minty fresh. Look at that manual. That's lovely. Really, really nice. And then, you know, the same for the cardboard box surround for the cartridge. And the cartridge is in, in minty condition. So really happy with the quality of these this cardboard boxes. You know, cardboard box games get wrecked, horrifically wrecked, but this one's managed to maintain a good condition. You know, there's a bit of scuffing over around it, but overall, really, really happy with the condition of this cardboard box. La Russa Baseball, Australian variant, is finally here. So this is a variant, it's the Australian variant. Again, if you've watched my video on the full EA PAL collection, you'll know that EA didn't bother for Australia to change any of their packaging. So this packaging here is the Genesis packaging um, and just released in Australia. And the only way you knew it was an Australian release is this one here has got this sticker here, which says um, sold and supported in Australia and New Zealand. So you know this is the Australian copy. This is also the thickest Sega Mega Drive box or Genesis box that you can get. I mean, just look how much thicker that is compared to uh, a Genesis box or a Mega Drive box. Um, and that is because inside they have all of these cards. Look at these stats cards. There's a huge amount of them. So you've got stats cards. Um, there's a poster in here, I think. Let's get it all out. So here are the stats cards. I haven't even bothered to go through them all here. There's loads of them, tons of stats cards. Uh, we then have the manual. And then we've got a poster as well. Oh, hang on, there's more. <laughs> there's a registration card. They really packed this box full of stuff. So we've got a, an electronic arts uh, poster as well. Um, let's have a look. What is the picture of? Oh, that's kind of cool. EA Sports poster there. Then we've got a registration card in there and then obviously the game itself. So this is the biggest box that was ever released for the Sega Mega Drive and Genesis as a standard clamshell, not excluding the big box variants. International Sensible Soccer Limited Edition. International Sensible Soccer Limited Edition. I've got the standard Sensible Soccer Edition. Whenever they did these limited editions, essentially this was the version of patching back then. So uh, slight improvement, sometimes some extra bits in there, but uh, it was a re-release with uh, upgrades in it. So that's how they used to patch uh, games in the old days. They just used to make a, a variant of it and re-release it. Um, but uh, quite cool. Uh, fond memories of Sensible Soccer. Anyone that loved Sensible Soccer back in the day, go back and play it now and you'll realize how hard it is to control. Maybe it's just because I'm an old man now. After four years of searching, Sequest DSV in great condition. Finally, finally in the collection. And this game has been so hard for me to find complete in box and in great condition. Look at this, minty, minty, fresh. This game I've seen come up, I don't know, three or four times in this condition, maybe. And I've missed out every single time. Uh, managed to get this one for 60 pounds in the end. Uh, 60 pounds for a minty version. The only problem is, is the hang tab is missing from it. Otherwise, in great, great condition. Again, one of those games which uh, I'm astounded when we look at games and how much they're selling for, that this one isn't selling for more. But uh, yeah, 60 pounds is what you'll pay for a decent quality copy of Sequest DSV. The first of our indie titles, Jesse Yeager in Cleopatra's Curse. So I did a video for Jesse Yeager in Cleopatra's Curse about a year ago now. Uh, and it's a really, really fun Metroidvania style game. Uh, I've only had a quick go on it. Um, I think I've got up to the same point I did in the demo. 
Um, now this game actually can come with a CD as well. So there's a CD uh, option to buy for this game. Um, I purchased just the standard edition. It was already quite expensive to get hold of and I had to pay for it to come over to the UK because it's obviously made in the United States. Um, but if you get the CD version, there's an option on the game where you say play music from CD. You put that into your Mega CD uh, and then you get CD quality sound with the, with the actual game as well, which is awesome. Uh, with my version, I did get the map. I can't remember if I had to pay extra for the map. Um, but the map has all of the levels on there mapped out. So if you wanted to cheat, um, you could use the map. Or if you want to make your life easier, that's how you do it with the map there. But uh, very cool indie dev game. Very good. Uh, a lot of fun. Not graphically the most amazing game you'll ever play, but just pure fun all the way through. My Kickstarter copy of Sacred Line 2. So I just went, I think this is the third one. I think you could get a ROM, a cartridge. Uh, and then you could get the full physical box. So I went for that and I added the pin as well. There were other versions where it allowed you to get the, the glass eye. Um, there's a poster just tucked in the back there. I'll show you that uh, later on. Comes with a ton of goodies in it. Uh, like I said, I opted to get the little eyeball pin there. They sent me two actually. And then we've got the game and we've got the manual and we've got some stickers and we've got some postcards with some cool artwork on it. And then obviously uh, there's the game itself. Uh, Mega Cat branding on that. And then inside I've got this. This is a small little poster, kind of an A4 poster for Sacred Line 2, which is very cool. And the cover here is double-sided so you can have Genesis or Mega Drive. Now I do not like the Mega Cat branding. I really don't like it. I mean compared to something like uh, Neofid or Kai Magazine Soft, um, it's just a little bit simple, right? They could have tried to make it look Mega Drive and you know if you look at the guys like Bitmap Bureau, they, they get their logo into that Mega Drive style logo. Um, the same with, uh, with Neofid. They do a lot of work on the branding to make it feel like it's original branding, but, uh, but with their actual branding inside that as well. Uh, and it looks great on the shelf. And considering you know, the people that are buying these games are people that love the physical aesthetics of this game, um, I would have hoped Mega Cat could put a little bit more effort into it. If you're the person that designed this, <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, I'm not having a go at you, but it's just... Come on, let's just get this, this styling a little bit more closer to, to what we got in Europe. Uh, it would look so much better on the shelf. But yeah, anyway, haven't played the game yet. I've played the demo. You know, it's not going to be for everyone. This is a very niche game, text adventure game, um, graphic novel game. It's going to be for a, a very niche group of people. Uh, but still, really happy to have it in the collection. Can't wait to play it. Now, as well as collecting for the Sega Mega Drive and Genesis, I'm also collecting for the 32X and Mega CD. Black Hole Assault, so many fond memories of this game. It's a, it's not a terrible game, but it's not a great game. Um, but what I loved about this game was, um, I love this disc to start off with, this kind of hot pink uh, and blue, uh, cyan blue next to it. Really, really cool kind of style disc. Had a really cool intro on it. Um, and there were some cool mechanics, right? Choosing the, the parts of different robots to go up against uh, and, and take down. But, you know, as a fighting game, uh, pretty bad. <laughs> but fond memories, nonetheless. This is not to everyone's taste, but I loved BC Races. I absolutely loved it. You know, kind of, it, it blew me away back in the day, reminded me of kind of Mario Kart, but on steroids. It just looked visually so amazing. And Core were doing such fantastic looking Mega CD games and Mega Drive games back in the day. Really, really loved playing this. Uh, a lot of nostalgia for it. Like I said, not for everyone, but uh, I'm so happy to have this back in the collection. Mortal Kombat CD. Probably one of my most favorite games ever. I loved Mortal Kombat uh, on the Mega Drive and getting it on the Mega CD was amazing. I was blown away, blown away by the intro and the soundtrack for this game. Um, a good condition box game I've got here, 
I've been rinsing it. I love playing it. I absolutely love playing this game. Um, one of my, like I said, one of my all-time favourites on, on the Mega CD. Uh, and it was just so brutal on the Mega CD, especially with that commercial that they run as the intro at the beginning. Very, very, very happy to have this back in my Mega CD collection. And the last game added to the Mega CD collection is this, Eye of the Beholder. Another game that I absolutely loved back in the day, like visually, audio was fantastic. Loved the cover art on it. In fact, I suspect I purchased this game back in the day because of the cover art in it, but I am a big RPG fan. Now, this game is a little hard to get into because it is pretty hardcore D&D, but uh, if you like your Dungeons and Dragons, then this is a good, good game to get hold of. So we're going to take a quick break here to take a look at all the games that I still need to collect to finish off this full power collection. And it also includes some of the Brazil exclusives that I'm still missing. So I've teased this game on the YouTube channel, putting out how much I spent for it. I think I, it was something like 2,000 something dollars I spent on this next game. Not US dollars though, Australian dollars. And that's because I purchased Fatal Fury 2 for the Sega Mega Drive. Probably the rarest and most expensive game that you can get on the Mega Drive. Now, some people will say it's Superman, that game is my nemesis game. That game isn't rare. That game is not this game. That game sold in 19 different countries and a copy of it turns up every single month on eBay or Facebook or in a store. This game was only sold in one country, one POW country, Australia. Super hard to get hold of. And in pounds, I paid 1,133 pounds stupid amount of money to pay for a bit of 90s plastic but if you're a collector still a lot of money to pay but if you're a collector you'll know that that's uh, not a bad price to pay for this game and it's in great condition so i think the first thing we're going to do is look at some of the differences between an aussie soft box the publisher who released all sega games in australia and a standard european pal game uh, and there are quite a few differences to the manufacturing of, of these games. And, and I'll give you some telltale signs so you know if you've got an original or if uh, someone's trying to pull a fast one on you. So, firstly, 
the boxes are not the same as the European PAL boxes. They're a slightly different plastic. Uh, the molding is slightly different. The shape's slightly different. It feels a little thinner. It definitely isn't as wide as a European box. So I'm just gonna balance precariously <laughs> a European box on top here. Let's see if I can get that lined up. You'll see that the European box here is a little wider than the Aussie Soft box. So if you've got a box that's the same size, you've probably got a replacement box or a, face bo a fake box. Uh, now when we go inside, there's some differences as well. So the biggest difference, and probably the only main difference you're interested in, is that it has Aussie Soft printed on the top of the left-hand corner of the box here. So Sega Aussie Soft PTY Limited. Um, and then I think the patent is different as well. Got a different patent. Usually I think the power ones have uh, the actual patent numbers on there. So two big, big differences there. Not as wide and you've got the patent numbers. Then of course on the cartridge itself, if you turn to the back here, we've got Sega Aussie Soft PTY Limited printed on the back. And interestingly, they used normal silver Phillips screw heads here. Whereas in PAL territories, Genesis and Japanese as well, we had those uh, special screws on the back there. Um, security screws that uh, prevented your average Joe from getting into the actual cartridge itself. Uh, Aussie Soft went super cheap <laughs> and just used normal screws. Uh, and then we got the manual itself. Obviously the manuals are blue throughout for Aussie Soft titles. Uh, so this was because it was cheaper to print, right? So in Europe, we had color manuals for a while, so color front covers and even color internals. But uh, Europe also went to black and white manuals um, because it was cheaper, cheaper print. Uh, and exactly the same here. But this manual is amazing. I love this manual, actually. It was great to look through. A lot of the manuals you get with the Mega Drive uh, and even the Genesis, you know, they're a by-the-numbers manual. Um, text telling you how to play the games but the imagery in this is brilliant six button game as well which is great and you've got all the screenshots in here uh, there's characters look little animation animations little illustrations showing you how to do the different moves not that it's helpful <laughs> it's, I guess it's showing you the different planes here because in Fatal Fury you could change uh, from a, a far plane to a near plane as well but loads of cool things. Iconography that we've got here. More screenshots, character illustrations. And then all the moves here, they've done little illustrations for each of the characters. Very, 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 very cool. Um, one of the interesting things I found about, and I don't know if this is with all Aussie Soft uh, manuals, is that they've not really um, built the manual correctly. Uh, so you need to kind of shave off uh, kind of the width of the page as you go along so that your manuals equal on the front and the back and they've not done that and so you end up with this where the manual doesn't completely go around it because they've not cut it correctly so I don't know if that's just a, a manufacturing issue on this one the way they've stapled it uh, the way they have put it together uh, or if it's a, an Aussie soft trademark thing that they've not actually done the manuals the correct way and so you end up, end up with them being off to one side but uh, regardless this manual is excellent and the the game in its entirety is in fantastic fantastic condition and you know it's what I'd expect if you're gonna spend that much money on a game that uh, the games in absolutely great condition and you know I see a lot of people that sell expensive games and they're in terrible condition you know and because of that fear of missing out that FOMO people go along and buy them and they've bought themselves a, a, a damaged game for an extremely high price. And you don't have to do that. There are plenty of games out there that are of good quality. And the more as collectors we insist that our games are in great quality, if you want top dollar, the more we'll be able to get to a point where if you've got a, if you want a game and you're willing to sacrifice on the condition, you'll pay less for it, not more. And that's where it should be, right? If you want a, a good quality car, you pay more for it. If it's a bit battered and your budget only goes that far, then you're paying less, but you know what you're getting. And we need that with our games as well. We need to be paying top dollar for the best quality games 
and expect a discount if it's not in such great condition. month for buying Mega Drive and Mega CD games. I've got some brilliant deals. Every single one of the games here that I've purchased, I've bought at less than the current going rate. So great deals. I've met some amazing people who have told me some amazing stories about their collections and about some of the games that I've added to the shelf here. And there've been some good games to play in this lot as well. Paying that much for Fatal Fury 2 and then to enjoy it is a bonus. I kind of like Sea Quest. I'm more happy that I've added it into the collection and I've really enjoyed playing the Mega CD games again, connecting with Mortal Kombat Mega CD and Eye of the Beholder. Now that's it for this month's Collector's Edition. We'll be back in four to six weeks, hopefully with more games to share with you. But until then, I'll catch you on the next one.